of my favorite stories to tell to children's teachers um, is the story of the the architect who had to replace a set of big wooden beams in a grand cathedral somewhere in England. And this cathedral was 800 years old. It had massive oak beams that were supporting the main roof structure running through the building. And uh, the architect had been called in because those beams needed to be replaced. <clears throat> and he was walking through the cathedral looking at them looking at the grandeur of this building and wondering where he could find that kind of timber and if they could use something else. And while he's walking through the building, uh, a groundsman comes and speaks to him and the two of them are discussing the problem. And the groundsman says to him, come with me, I wanna show you something. And the groundsman takes him outside of the cathedral <clears throat> and he points to the area around the cathedral and he says, look and see what's there. And the architect realizes that around the cathedral are hundreds and hundreds of oak trees. All of these oak trees are 800 years old. They are big, well-established trees. And the groundsman says to him, those trees were planted for the purpose of replacing those beams when the time came. In other words, the people building that church had a plus 800 year vision for that church. That is no, a remarkable thought. Do we have the same kind of thinking when it comes to building people, when it comes to building values into children that is going to last beyond their lifetime into the third and fourth and plus generations? I believe that if we think that way, then we actually are thinking eternally. Because if we, if we plan for 400-year-old uh, ministries, 800-year-old ministries, then we're also planning for 1,200 and for 6,000-year-old ministries and however long we have until Christ comes back. So this is a, a good reminder when we're dealing with children on a daily basis that we are building something that is going to last forever. Probably my go-to scripture when it comes to children's ministry is found in Isaiah 61. And uh, <clears throat> the first four vo verses, I believe, are paramount to children's ministry. And I when I read it, I want you to listen for the, the, the us and them statements. The statements of the anointed, the anointed people to teach, it's, and, and, the, and, the, and those that are receiving the teaching. It obviously is a, a prophecy about Christ, but it's also about his church. And in terms of children's ministry, it's a prophecy about the, the calling to be a child's, children's minister, but it's also about the children that we are to lead. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is, is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance for our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a, a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And here comes the part that is about those who are ministered to, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Now just apply that for a moment to the ministry to children in this kind of first world environment, same applies for second and third worlds too. The broken hearted, the prisoners, those who are mourning in ashes. This describes childhood really well. There are so many children who have enough uh, material possessions but are, but are in poverty relationally. There are a great many children who have who do not have provision enough, physical provision. And if we were to minister to them correctly, then they become the ones 
who are called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They end up rebuilding the ancient ruins, re- renewing the cities that have been devastated for generations. Now that's a goal that I can get behind in terms of children's ministry. Before we end this first uh, session, uh, there, there's two books that I want to recommend to you. Um, these books have both been wonderful um, gifts for me. I I found this first one difficult to find. It's called Children and the Gospel by Ron Buckland. And it is a Scripture Union Press um, uh, publication. Extremely useful tool. Um, I love how Ron tackles issues like how to lead children to Christ. I'm going to go over that in in this class. Um, he speaks about children's capacities, what they can understand, what they can't. Um, he speaks about how to engage children in conversation. He, he talks about some of our goals in kids' ministry, principles. We will treat every child as a unique individual. We'll delight in every response a child makes. We will teach so that no unlearning is required. We will not demand too much from a child. We will not expect too little from a child either. These are the kinds of uh, wonderfully rich tools that Ron wants to impart into the children's ministry. Highly recommended book. The other one is this uh, tiny little book, which you can find readily on Amazon or somewhere else. Come Ye Children, Charles Spurgeon, Teaching About Kids' Ministry. Um, I can't recommend this book enough. It is a wonderful uh, addition to your library.